A polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials, each called a term of the polynomial. Some polynomials have special names. So first off, starting with a monomial, a monomial is any number, variable, or product of numbers and variables. Uh, you can see one such, such example here, 5x is the product of the number 5 and the variable x. Uh, it could be something as simple as just a number. You could have just a 4, or you could have just a variable like y, or you could have something like 8abc squared. That's considered a monomial because it's all multiplication, no addition or subtraction or division in a monomial. But don't get that confused with what a polynomial is. A polynomial, as stated up here above, is the sum of monomials. So when you add those terms together, you get what's called a polynomial. There are some special names for polynomials. We have what is called a binomial, is the sum of two monomials, like this down here, 2x squared plus 7 is a binomial because it's two different monomials or two terms added together. And a trinomial is the sum of three monomials. You can see right here, x cubed is a monomial, negative 10x is a monomial, positive 1 is a monomial. When you add and subtract all those together, you get what's called a trinomial. When you start getting into four terms and such, uh, they don't have any special names after that. Terms of a polynomial can be written in any order. However, polynomials in one variable are usually written in standard form. The standard form of a polynomial has the terms in order from greatest to least degree, in other words, greatest to least exponent. And in this form, the coefficient of the first term is called the leading coefficient. So technically, your answers can always be in any order, but it is standard to put them in what's called standard form, which is in descending order of exponents. So notice the first term is your x to the third term in this one, then minus 5x squared, and then plus 2x. That would be 2x to the first power. And then the last term, called the constant, doesn't have any variables. That is called standard form. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the highest degree. And the reason it's called a lead coefficient is because if you do write it in standard form in descending order of exponents, that's going to be the first number that you see. So the first example is to write each polynomial in standard form and then identify the leading coefficient. So the highest exponent that I see on this one is 4x to the fifth, so it goes first. Oftentimes on problems like this, after I write it down, I will put a little slash through it to remind myself that I've already used that term. I'm not canceling anything out when I'm doing that. I'm just not going to want to accidentally write that term again. The next highest exponent would be the x squared term. <clears throat> so that would be 3x squared, so plus 3x squared because it's a positive 3x squared. And then the negative 7x right there, so I would write minus 7x at the end. The leading coefficient on that one, I'll just abbreviate that LC, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the highest term, and that would be a 4. If the lead coefficient doesn't have a coefficient in front of it, then we always assume that that leading coefficient will be a 1. Part B, the highest degree, is y to the fourth power, so I'm going to write negative 2y to the fourth. And then after that, negative 6y to the third. Then after that, I've got 5y, and that is a positive 5y, so I'll write plus 5y. And then the constant is a negative 9, so minus 9. Leading coefficient will be that first term. It is with the highest degree of exponent, and that will be a negative 2. Second part of this lesson is about adding and subtracting polynomials. You can add poly polynomials involving adding like terms. You can group like terms by using a horizontal or vertical format. And we will most likely use the horizontal format because that is the way that uh, your problems are usually given to you. <clears throat> so again, it is helpful to write these in descending order of exponents. It is an organizational method. And as we move forward, you'll see that if you write things in descending order of exponents, it actually makes 
the steps beyond what we're doing today easier. So we're just adding together like terms, which means they have to have the same variable and the same exponent. So we could start out saying that we have like terms of 2x squared and negative 4x squared. So we'll add those together. And net 2x squared plus negative 4x squared will be negative 2x squared because positive 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. Notice we're not adding the exponents. You actually add exponents when you multiply terms with exponents. Uh, we use the exponents to identify like terms when adding or subtracting. And then we have positive 5x and positive 6x. So when we add those together, we get positive 11x. And then we finish it off with our constants that we have negative 7 and 3. And negative 7 plus 3 would be negative 4. So we finish it off with minus 4. And there's your answer. There's no more like terms there. So, and we have it written descending order of exponents. So we're done. Part B, the highest degree is x y to the third powers. So I have a 2y to the third and a y to the third. So that would be 3y to the third. And then the next highest degree is a 4y squared in the second x or the second polynomial, but I don't see a y squared in the first polynomial, so there's nothing to add to that 4y squared. So I'll just bring it down. And then I see 3y and negative 4y. So 3y plus negative 4y is negative 1y or just negative y. So I put minus y. And then finally, I have my constants. I have negative 5 and positive 8. And negative 5 plus 8 will be positive 3. When subtracting polynomials, it is helpful to use what we used to do in Algebra 1 and pre-algebra when you would have a question like, let's say, 3 minus negative 5 where you would change the minus sign to a plus and then change the sign of the next number and then wind up turning it into an addition problem. 3 plus 5 is just 8. With polynomials, we will change the minus sign to a plus, but then you change the sign of every term in the next set of parentheses in the next polynomial. So I'll change that minus to a plus, but change that positive 4 to negative 4, change that negative 5 to positive 5, change that positive 3x squared, it will now become negative 3x squared. And then we add just like we did above. So starting with the highest degree of exponents, I have positive 2x squared plus, and that is a negative 3x squared now. When we combine those together, I get negative 1x squared or just negative x squared. And then I have negative 2x, and this is now a negative 4x. So when I add those together, that is negative 6x. And then finally, I have positive 3, and then I did change that to a positive 5, so that is positive 8. So negative x squared minus 6x plus 8. And then part B, same situation. It is subtraction, so let's change that to addition. So change the minus to a plus, change the sign of every term in the next set of parentheses. So that is going to be a negative 2, and that will be a positive 9p. I don't have any other p to the third powers in the second set of parentheses. So I'm just going to bring that down as 4p to the third power. And then the first set of parentheses, the first polynomial doesn't have any p squares, but there is a p squared in the second set. And I did change that to a negative 3p squared. So I'll bring down negative 3p squared. And then we do have some like terms. We do have 7p plus positive 9p, and that is going to be plus 16p. And then finally finish with our constants. They don't have any variables, or, so they're going to be our last term. So negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10.